Hello! Today's set of wheels is the Honda CB1000R, new for 2018. The Revival is the Neo version, and it is really quick, really enjoyable, feels fairly lightweight, lovely, delightful, sexy. It is sexy. I like it a lot. I will do you so hard. There's a camera in here, isn't there? Someone's watching this at home. First thing I should say is that the suspension setup is quite stiff. Marginally less stiff than the MT10 that I tried with the um, Olins. But that sort of makes sense. We've got a shower on this one, big piston on the front. We have a shower rear monoshock. The rear monoshock is semi adjustable. This is a bit bright. Ta da! Looking good. And the front is fully adjustable. Pretty stable at low speeds. I would say it feels a little on the tall side. It's 830 millimeters for the seat, but I feel like I can uh, get my feet down easy enough. The front end feels just a little bit light. It's not terrible, but it is something to be aware of if you really gun it. That front is just flicking around a little bit. All right then, bye. So the Honda CB1000R Neo, did I like it? Meh. <laughs> First let me do the obligatories and get the statistics out for this bike. It is a four cylinder 998cc, it's an inline four cylinder of course, liquid cooled. We know this tech has been around for a long time, especially with Honda. It is their bread and butter and as always it still works, it's still really really nice. Develops around 143 horsepower at 10,500 revs and around 76 foot-pounds of torque at 8,250 revs. Precisely. Very nice at low speeds. Balanced a little on the tall side, perhaps. Happily uses in the town. 212 kilograms wet. 1,455 millimeter for wheelbase. Not particularly short, not particularly long. Seat height of 830 millimeters. Actually just on the cusp of me being able to flat foot. I am five foot 10 if you're around the same and you have kind of a regular inseam. 31 inch inseam, I think. Then you too will also be able to flat foot. Brakes are fairly standard, 310 millimeter dual discs, four piston radial mounted calipers, on the front at least. On the back, 256 millimeter rear disc. They felt perfectly fine for a bike of this size and weight. We are in sport mode. That I appreciate. Oi, yay, yay! Them bumps. Them bumps, though, they hurt. Suspension comes from Showa in the form of big piston, separate functional forks, adjustable for compression, rebound, and preload. And rear shock, again from Showa, adjustable for rebound and preload. They don't compress an awful lot, I have to say. Um, but at least it makes it a little bit more agile and fairly sure-footed. So the indicator's on the left in a little circle. That's a nice dash though. I like it. Just goes to prove that you don't necessarily need colour TFT displays. The annoying thing is you can't see that cute little light down there, which I can. Look at that. Hey, that you can tailor. The screen is LCD. I really enjoy having that tachometer on the left going around to give you your rev range. I enjoy seeing it in that fashion and not in the band form that it comes in on some other bikes. You've also got an adjustable light, which you can actually change yourself, which was a nice little cute feature. You can turn it into a shift light if you so desire, or it can be an eco meter, so I'm told. I didn't actually get a chance to use that, obviously, but you can stick it in there to give you kind of a, a green beacon so that you know you're in, when you're in the sweet spot for fuel preservation, I suppose. Don't know, haven't used it, never have on a bike, probably never will. Now you should be able to in the modes, it does change the engine braking a little bit. It's ride by wire and all the fancy electronics in the engine, which means that it's adjustable by Honda. They can change certain characteristics of it. I can't tell a huge difference with engine braking, I have to say. Sport mode. Maybe, a, uh, is that more or less? I really can't tell. Rain mode. Yeah, I'm not noticing the biggest difference, let's say. So don't get bogged down by rider modes too much. I think that's something you'll have to live with to really tell a difference between them. On the day, obviously, I did play with the rider modes. 
and they work reasonably well. Let me just uh, clarify a few points. First of all, you can change it on the fly. You don't even need to dip off the revs. It will change as you're going along. So that's quite quick and intuitive. As far as traction control goes, of course, I didn't really feel much of it. I didn't do anything so extravagant that would test it. Uh, but as far as their rider modes go, again, highest traction control, logically, is on rain. Then you've got the standard mode, which has medium traction control, and sport, which again has the lowest form of traction control so you could if you want to loft that front as for power again i didn't notice a huge difference maybe just a little tiny difference i probably wasn't on them long enough to really discern uh, the sort of nuance between the, the rider modes themselves however what they've done essentially is with sport clearly you get all of the power 100 percent whatever you want for torque as far as standard mode goes, it's quite clever in the sense that they limit it in first and second gear, so it's a little bit more tame in a town maybe, uh, and a little bit softer as you're powering on. Uh, and then it gives you pretty much all the power when you get to gear three, four, and five onwards, up to six, there are six gears, uh, I can count. And then of course, rain has the least amount of power, they've limited that off clearly, because of course if you've got less traction, you don't want all of the power all of the time. So with the gearing, it's got six gears, apparently one, two, three are quite short and they've done that so that it's a little bit punchier. You can get up to speed much quicker up to its happiest rev zone, so around 6,000 revs is really when it's supposed to pick up uh, over crest. <laughs> Has a price point of £11,300, roughly, unless you go for the Plus, which comes in at £12,300. And the Plus obviously comes with a few little extras. It comes with a quick shifter as standard, heated grips, comes with a few other cosmetic details, and a seat cal. Yeah, in answer to my earlier question, they are completely right. 6000 fix up. There's that little four-cylinder overdrive kind of whoop. It goes so fast, so fast, hey, interstellar. The nice thing with the frame of the tank is that you can hug into it quite well. You feel just a little bit perched on top, perhaps. Oh, I didn't even realize I had that down. That's why it's so dark, isn't it? And now I can see. Okay, so the character and charm of this bike. First and foremost, it is your typical four cylinder. And what I mean by that is in terms of engine characteristics, it gets keener the more you hang on. For a four cylinder though, it is a little bit buzzy. That really brings me on to, I guess, the flaws for the bike or the things that I would like to critique and just pick up on. Firstly, as I say, the engine for a four cylinder is a little bit buzzy. You do get a bit of a feedback there through your feet, through the pegs and through the bars, just a little bit. And obviously only when you're really hanging onto the revs and kind of abusing the engine. The other thing I would just mention, and I will handle this relatively sensitively because it's probably more to do with me than it was the bike, is that the front end was a little bit flighty under hard acceleration. Just to clarify, it could have been more to do with me, but basically, as I powered on and pulled away quickly, I found that when I was changing gear, that kind of adjustment on the bars was enough to give the front end just a bit of a waggle. Now the Honda does feel really agile, very quick to turn, but I can only imagine that the compromise there is possibly that under hard acceleration, the front end will get a little bit more lively. It was a small adjustment. It only happened to me once, really, and then I just gripped the bike a little bit firmer with my knees and was softer with my gear changing. Wasn't quite as aggressive or abrupt, but it didn't necessarily suit my style of riding, which is possibly to say my style of riding is crap. And I'll take that on the chin if that's true, which it probably is. And hi-ho, silver, away. So where have Honda nailed it? Where have they really got it on the money for this bike? Well, if I was picking up my favorite points to the bike, I would start off with the looks. It really is quite a pretty machine, more so when you get up close as well. The paint job, the finish, fit and finish of this thing is great, but then you wouldn't expect any different from Honda now, would you? Or would you? No, you wouldn't. It's fine at low speeds. It's very, very stable. It is also very comfortable. The seat is a nice place to be. You feel tall enough from the bike, but you still feel nice and connected to it. It's got a really flat tank, which is quite nice in a way because you can get a little bit closer to the machine. It could be somewhat less characterful than other bikes, but I have to say it's got a nice note to it. And it equips itself well in practically every setting. 
I don't think I could find anything other than off-road that I wouldn't use this bike for. And with the agility and the power that it has to hand as well, it will keep up with most things. With the industry at the moment, there's obviously a huge press on classic bikes and bikes looking retro. And whilst I am a big fan of that particular style of bike, I do like to see manufacturers take their own lead and take their own direction on this. And based on the fact that Honda have gone this route and that another very trendy manufacturer, Husqvarna, have a very similar looking set of bikes, for me, personally, I feel like this might be the direction the industry goes in next. Whilst they may have taken a risk with the looks, they certainly haven't taken a risk with the mechanics. It works perfectly. And of course, being a Honda CB1000 or a CB in general, that name is synonymous with quality and with reliability as well. I have no doubt this will be a similar story. Thanks for watching. Again, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, or share this wherever you want to, please feel free. If I haven't mentioned already, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I will catch you in the next video. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. Ciao now.